Right guys, so in this episode today, um, we're looking at Twiggy, who's a client's dog. I've done a little bit of training with her in the past, but I had her for a few days while my client was away. And what I've worked on here is some heel and predominantly the sit and how to use the lead to get the dog sitting up straight. You'll see, uh, you'll see me using one of my puppy leads, which is a really important part at the beginning to establishing the correct length of lead for the dog and the individual using that lead. And through this video, you'll see how I'm using the lead to instigate the dog into the sat position that I want. Um, I'm always trying to keep things fun, interactive, lots of movement, lots of eye contact. I hope you enjoy this. Yeah. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Twiggy, twiggy. Twiggy, twiggy. So throughout this video, you'll see me turning away from the dog when I turn. I want to try and get the dog to keep up with me or rather than dragging the dog around the bend as I turn and go back. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. So you'll see here what fabulous eye contact I have from Twiggy all the time. None of this is done using treats. It's just done through respect and guidance through the lead. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Good girl. Twiggy, 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 twiggy. Good girl. Ah, ah. Good girl. She keeps trying to drop around the back of me there on that turn. I'll turn into her this time. Little tug. Turn. Heel. Good girl. Sit. Lovely and straight. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Bit jumping. I don't mind that. It's just a bit of neediness. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yeah, come on. Ah, ah. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. See, when I pull back, I'm pulling this way, not tight to my thigh. Twiggy. Out here. Come on. Come on. Getting distracted by the train, aren't you? Come on. Turn into it this time. Twiggy. 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 Good girl. Good girl. So I'm going to push out that way with my hand. Sit. So I'm counteracting her going the other way. I'll do it again. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Hands going this way, out. Not inwards, outwards. Try and get us to turn again. Twiggy, 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 twiggy. Come on, come on. I wanted to keep up with me. That's it, good girl. Ah, uh -uh. good girl, good girl. Come on, lots of enthusiasm. Big heart this time. Big heart, big heart, big heart. Nice and quick, nice and quick. Good girl, I'm gonna push out, push out. I don't even have to use a lot of force now because I used the lead quite firmly in the first few minutes. Unfortunately, I didn't get it on camera. Now, I only need a little bit of firmness and the direction out to force it to sit. So I'm not pulling tight to my thigh, which is what everyone does. I'm pulling outwards. To see if I can do it again. Do it again. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Out. And that counteracts her trying to turn inwards. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, good girl. That's what I wanted. Lots of enthusiasm. Let's try a little trot. Good girl, come on, come on. So with these young dogs, when you first start doing sit and heel, they can lose confidence very quickly. So a little bit of a run or a little jog can often get them moving well again. Always makes it a bit more fun, doesn't it? Come on, come on, come on. That's, uh, uh. Good. Just have to stop her there. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Outwards. Nice sharp sit. Good girl. Don't normally touch her, but I'm holding her down at the same time so she can't move out of that position. Good girl, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. No, wrong side. This side. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Come on in. One more time for the camera. Let's go back the other way. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Lots of speed. Lots of speed. And sit. So look how far my hand is away from my body. It's not here, which is what everyone does. I'll show you side on. When everyone does sits, they pull here like this. I'm pulling out that way not tight to my bum because when you do that you pull the dog's head towards your knee and they finish like this you see whereas when you pull out if anything you're making the bum come inwards and that's exactly what we want so at this stage i'm obviously proactively using the lead quite a lot but where i'm firm early on the dog very quickly learns to basically counteract me and i often find that the dog will start sitting 
just as they're coming to a halt, meaning that I can stop using the lead at that point. One more time for the camera. Come on, Ed. come on, Twiggy, 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 Twiggy. Come on, Twiggy, Twiggy. Good girl, good girl, lots of enthusiasm, lots of enthusiasm. Get that tail going. She feels a bit knocked because I've been a little bit firm on her, but that will go once she knows what I want from her. So I'm going to push outwards that way and tug. Good girl, well done. Right guys, so I'm just going to do a quick summary of what you've just seen. At the beginning, we were using that lead just to prompt the dog at the right points, using the lead in the right way to get that dog sitting up straight in the direction I'm walking. Don't want that bum to spit out or even face me because if I was walking up to a curb, for example, I wouldn't want my dog sticking his bum out into the road. The second thing you'll see me using one of my puppy leads here. So they're super soft. They've got a little ring on them. They tighten and loosen really easily. They have different loops up through the lead, which we can move around until we find the correct length for the handler and the dog. So when I'm working with my online clients, it's one of the first things I'm trying to establish once we've got the dog moving in some sort of fashion is where I want to hold the lead. Once we've got the correct position, then we can always, or I'll always know that that person is holding the lead in the same place. So that's something we then don't have to worry about. You'll also notice a lot of the time I'm being really, really interactive. I want to keep my sessions quite short and sweet. Lots of interaction, cues with the lead, praise afterwards, keep the dog moving. The other thing is to remember, you can't really do a good sit until you have a good heel. So that's probably the thing that you need to work on first. Once you've got a good heel, the sit can then be your next focus. But think of it like layers without a good foundation, which is your heel. You can't stick too many more layers on top of that before things start to fall apart. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Catch you later, guys.